My name is Melanie Potok, and I'm here tonight to talk about kids who are picky eaters. And do kids really grow out of picky eating? Well, you know what? One out of four typically developing children won't grow out of picky eating. It becomes what we call a feeding disorder, and that's separate from an eating disorder, which focuses on body image and weight in that sense of feeding disorder is about the feeding relationship and about children narrowing down their repertoire or never developing their repertoire and never having more than a handful of foods. Now, picky eating can be a spectrum. So we can have kids who are just garden variety picky eaters. We can have kids who have selective or hesitant eating habits. We can have children who can't eat orally at all and are working their way there. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna talk about picky eating as sort of the umbrella term for all children because the concepts are the same. As I said, research has shown that one in four children, 25% of typically developing children, won't grow out of picky eating. So we see a natural tendency toward picky eating between 18 months of age, right up to almost age three. It kind of varies for child. But from child to child, but we even see picky eating in infancy. And what we mean by that is for whatever reason, a child may not be that eager when they first start solid foods to interact with that food, to take that food into their mouth and be willing to experience it, or it's just a little bit more challenging for them. There's a new research study that just came out, and later on I'll share it in the comments, that shows that these infants and later toddlers who, who had trouble with early eating development in terms of becoming um, more adventurous, even as infants and, and starting out with foods, those kids are likely to not grow out of the picky eating. And that makes sense to us as feeding specialists, for sure. But what I found interesting was the biggest influence on those children and any child, of course, is what the parents are serving at home. So if those children had a parent who was also a picky eater, naturally they're not going to be serving a variety of foods. And it only makes that more challenging and much less likely that that kiddo will eventually grow out of it. So let's talk about what picky eating really means in, for, for all children and, and how do kids become picky eaters if they aren't just going through that natural stage. I want you to think about the four foundations for eating. First of all, you have to have good physiology, sound physiology, and that's how your body functions. So little kids who have trouble with constipation or perhaps have um, gastroesophageal reflux, or they have difficulty swallowing, something that is going awry within their body, that's poor physiology. And that can often include the sensory processing system. So the way we take in information and we process it and we know how to react to it, if at all, how important it is, should we react or should we just ignore it? And what, how big of a reaction do we need to provide? Well, that's sensory processing, and everybody has a different level of that. We all have good days and bad days, but especially children, that sensory processing system is still maturing as they grow. And our, for our premature babies, they have a very immature neurological system, and that's always going to impact sensory processing. So think about physiology and sensory processing. That's the first two. The next foundation that all children have to have are solid motor skills. So good, solid, gross motor skills, nice trunk stability, and that's gonna provide the foundation for nice fine motor skills, like picking up a pea or um, forking a piece of cantaloupe that's slippery and sliding all over the, the plate, and being able to put it up to their mouth and really chew it effectively and efficiently, yet another fine motor skill. Once we've taken a look at the child's physiology, sensory processing, uh, motor skills, then we take a look at behavior. Not that the kid's being naughty, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just what's happening that either encourages him to try new foods or discourages him. And not only the child's behavior, 
but the parent's behavior as well. And we also have to consider as a part of behavior, temperament. You know, kids all come with their own <laughs> unique personality and temperament, as do parents. And um, I've really noticed that over the years, the parents I'm working with, they might have two or three kids with certain personalities, and then that third kid comes along and they've got a little stronger personality, a little bit more uh, fire in their temperament, and they start to parent them differently. They start to parent them differently. So, when you consider all of those factors, that any child who has difficulty with physiology, sensory processing, motor skills, or they've just got a temperament that makes food, exploring food, a little more challenging than the brothers and sisters did, the parents now start to parent them a little differently and things can go awry. Not at all saying it's anybody's fault, it's not. It's just how relationships are built. You know, we read into each other's cues and we try to figure out what works for the other person and um, we build from there. And so a lot of what feeding therapy does and a lot of what picky eating, eating specialists like myself do is help parents take a look at what they might be doing in the home that perhaps is working well, but perhaps isn't working so well. And how we can just shift things a little bit to get everyone back on a, a smoother track to happier meal times.